Race four of the BMW IBS F two-man bobsleigh World Cup. We're in Königsee, Bavaria, night race in a cold weekend here in southern Bavaria, just outside the town of Berchtesgaden. Getting ready for the action in the second heat of the two-man. I'm Martin Haven. Alongside me is American driver Brittany Reinbolt, who raced earlier in the women's encounter. And Brittany, again this season, we got another tough two-man contest on our hands. We do. Here's uh, Johannes Lochner from Germany. This is his home track. He's currently in third place, but definitely in fighting distance to move up into one of those top two spots. And like I said, it's his home track, so he knows it better than anybody, and we'll see if he can pull up here in the second heat. You can see coming up here, uh, now we have Francisco Friedrich, reigning gold medalist from the Olympics, tied with Justin Cripps, which is interesting. Um, and he is only three hundredths out of the lead from Justin Cripps. So he's uh, just pulling away all season long. Really good driver. Can he pull ahead of Cripps now and get another win? And here's Justin Cripps, North American on a German track, fending off three Germans. It's going to come down to the second heat to see if he can hold them off. Uh, he's put in together. He also tied with uh, Friedrich for the gold medal in the Olympics. And these three have been battling it out, not only this year, not only last year, but the race before, the Olympics, everything. It's just a dogfight every single time they get on the ice together. 1600s cover the top three. That's realistic where the medals come. And can Cripps hold on? He was 400s ahead on his birthday last week. In fact, not his birthday, his Brakeman's birthday last Saturday and lost the lead to Friedrich. Lochner in third, could conceivably win it and then Nico Walter, Oscars Kieber Manis and behind him Robin Heinrich 300s covering the next group then we've got a massive group of sleds from the tie for ninth down to the tie for 13th that's six sleds covered by a tenth of a second another close group 15 16 17th and then 18 19 20 uh, the three sleds at the bottom of the field don't get a second heat. We cut the field to only the fast 20. There's Brad Hall. Different sled for the first time this weekend he's getting used to. Alexander Bredikin there. There's a little bit of snow starting to fall. Nothing like they've had for the last couple of weeks here, though, Brittany. It's been very snowy in training. And even for guys like Olympic champion Francesco Frugic, the Germans that know this track well, never mind for the likes of you who haven't raced here for a couple of seasons, it's a very different track when there's snow on it and when it's light roads. Exactly. Completely different. Exactly. And for us, the snow actually makes it a lot more grippy. So when there's snow in the track, you have a lot of control. And then you get to a race like this, all of a sudden there's no snow. It's really slick and a lot harder to control. And the more experience you have on the track, the more chance you have of adapting to that. Now, we've got the World Cup medals to give out here this weekend. We have also got the European Championship medals to give out here this weekend. And as we look at our start draw from 20 down to one, they'll go in reverse order. Both runs count. Total elapsed time decides the winners and the other positions. Justin Cripps, of course, even if he wins, won't be European champion because he's not a European. So it looks like a German 1-2-3 in the medals and in terms of the European Championship, that would not be against the run of form in recent seasons. 20 slaves to decide. Race four of the BMW IBSF two-man bobsleigh World Cup. Martin Haven, an American driver, Brittany Reinbold in the booth. Trackside here, Koenigsee in Bavaria. And your compatriot, Justin Olsen, with Blaine McConnell on the back of the two-man sled, 20th after the first heat. Blaine's a rookie. This is really good for him to get this experience behind a sled. He's got a lot of athletic potential. So just this race experience is just going to help uh, him grow within the program and be a force to be reckoned with going forward. Well, it's really future. important to keep the brakeman, to, to give brakeman races, keep your top guys and girls rested so everybody stays healthy, stays fit. You know, we're all looking forward to the World Championships in Whistler. That's going to be a tough couple of weeks. Exactly. Cripps is the rabbit in our first heat, uh, in our second heat rather. He's the guy that sets the time that everybody else will be looking to try and beat. This is a better looking run down the bottom of the track. That tight lower labyrinth is really hard to thread your way through. Exactly, yeah, the bottom portion of the track is looking really nice for Justin. Uh, and he's he's a newer driver on tour too, so he's still learning in races as well as training. Yeah, and you only get eight runs or ten runs if you're doing two-man and four-man a weekend. Six in training across the two disciplines, and then two if you make the heats in each of the runs. And then you go away and come back next year. So you get ten minutes of ice time, lots of thinking time, 
but not really much driving time. Exactly. And hey, he finished in the top 20. That's points moving forward. Coming here at S4, really close to that right wall right there. That can get dangerous and when you hit it like that. Cost you some major time. But he gets the skid under control, even though he lost the time. Well, 50.22 slide, so 1,600 is better than his first run. And this is what it's about, you know, every, whether you're the Olympic champion or a first timer, you've got to try and make progress every time you're on the ice. Exactly. Well, Justin Olsen in a tight battle at the tail of our top 20 with Rudy Rinaldi of Monaco and the next sled, Yun Jong Won of Korea, who's just out of sight on the left hand side of your shot. So, Rudy Rinaldi and Boris Va with a massive two hundredths of a second advantage oh, over Olsen. Oh, exactly. Anything can happen here. The field can, will get mixed up. Nice load from the two boys. And they started 5.03 in the first heat, 5.04 in the second. So they lose five hundredths of a second. Yeah, but, he, but Rudy, uh, even though he had a slower start, had great speeds in that first heat. So we'll see if he gets those speeds again and if that could help him pull ahead. Yeah, Coach Bruno Michon produces a fast sled wherever he works. Spent a lot of time with the French and the Monegasques. Down into the Chrysler, three pressures. Nice control on the exit, brings it over to the Doodle. He's threading that needle nicely. Right down the middle of the tube. Was 300s behind at the start. It's 800s now. Has he got the speed to overhaul Cripps? Uh, Olsen, rather. Yes, he does. He's quicker than the US sled by two or three kilometers an hour. No, at the line. Olsen stays in the leader's box. All right, so Americans move up one spot. That's good for Justin, but unfortunate for uh, Rudy Rinaldi and Monaco. But the good news is if you make it into the second heat, you can't drop outside the top 20. So the worst from 19th that he'll end up is in 20th place. Exactly. So he had the speeds. Uh, just. Didn't put it together today, which happens to everyone. Here's Kreisel, three waves. That's the first one, dip of the second one, lets it ride a little high, drives it into the belly of the third wave. And you gotta control that third pressure to get the exit. Decent and exit here off 17, but rubs the wall as you climb quite steeply uphill. Yeah, you don't wanna take those hits when you're going uphill. That's for sure. So Justin Olsen leads. Next up, Yun Jung Won of Korea, the Olympic silver medalist in four-man bobsleigh in Pyeongchang. So tomorrow, four-man day might be his favorite day here. By the way, John Morgan, I imagine you'll be watching at home at some stage. I was uh, watching training yesterday, or day before yesterday. Yun Jung Won came up to me and said, hey, where's John Morgan? Why aren't we seeing him? Well. Looking forward to seeing him when we catch up with him in Lake Placid for the US-Canada part of the tour. Yeah, I think everyone will be glad to hear John Morgan's voice back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 700s is the advantage for Justin, uh, for Yuta one over Justin Olsen. They had a good start. That's what really helped them coming into here. They're in the green despite the skids, but it's only 200s. All right, this is nip and tuck with the Olympic silver medalist. In the red. Yeah. Olsen with good speed at the bottom, 112.5 from the BMW sled, 118.1 from the Koreans. We saw that in the first heat, the Koreans, one of the slowest sleds. So Olsen on the right and his teammate Blaine McConnell hanging out in the leader's box. Yeah, I'm wondering if this is the same sled they've had all season because they did do some damage to a sled and Segolda yeah. had to replace it. Um, so I don't know if this is the new one or the fixed old one. Right, it looks like it's not brand new, but then yeah. it's hard to tell. Unless, it, unless they carry all the battle scars. Yeah, he did skid out of the grooves here as well. Maybe a little late sitting down, doesn't grab the D-rings quite yet. Breaks yeah. away a little bit. Out of Kreisel. Let's see what they're... Little hard, brings it up onto that second labyrinth doodle early. Really skids into that. Uh, Yen or curve or... Uh, there is yeah. Yun Jung Won. He slips two places behind Rudy Rinaldi. So Justin Olsen leads with three down. Czech Republic's Dominic Dvorak and Jakub Nosek next up. Now they were uh, some 1700s ahead of Justin Olsen from the first heat, 1300s, but they're in a three way group covered by 300s of a second. To get them up to 15th place, they need just a fraction cleaner run than last time. And they have one of the top starts, so let's see what they do here. 
489. Wow, that's a fantastic yeah. getaway. 492 in the first heat was fifth quickest in the field. Yeah, I think that 489 start's really, really going to help him. Well, now he's got to carry that speed. A little early off, but it's keeping the runners going straight. Now they're, they're going to Still in the lead. The gap's gone from 23 to 36 hundreds over Justin Olsen. He's gaining time and it's looking good. He's definitely got the sled under control. Well, this is Dominic Dvorak aiming to finish up in the top 12, never mind the top 15. Really good looking run. Still 38 hundreds up. 36 hundreds now. Not quite as quick as the US sled at the line. So 50 0 1. That's a third of a second quicker than his previous run, which was a 50.33. Uh, Brittany Reinbold, that's a lifetime. 3,300's quicker. That is a lot of tidying up. Yeah, that is quite the margin. He was probably really frustrated with his first run, came out here, cleaned it up, and it shows. And when you have those starts, you could really be competitive. Down a little early, brush that wall. That cost him a little bit, but overall, still a much, much better run. Well, listen, if he'd done 50 one in the first heat, that would have left him in ninth place, not 17th where he was by going a quarter second slower. And it was untidy down the labyrinth as well again, still learning the trade like Justin Olsen, like a lot of the newer drivers. He's now the Czech Republic's number one that Jan Verber's retired. Dominic Dvorak leads for the Czech Republic. Next up for the Netherlands, Ivo de Bruyne and Dennis Fenker. De Brown hot off a top 10 finish last week in Altenburg in the two-man. Really good run through to seventh place. All right, 501 start, so slightly slower than the first heat, but not too far off, so he's still within the mix to equal his time. 1700s back, that just shows how good Dvorak's run just was. Couple of tenths of a second, cover the gap from 16th to 9th place. And he did have an untidy first heat. This is looking better, but he's two tenths back. Yeah, it's looking pretty clean, pretty solid. Huge figure of Dennis Fenker behind him, quite clearly visible there in the Chrysler from above. 900, so he's making up time, but is there enough track left is the question. Good speed is needed, good speed he's Ooh. got. He's the fastest of all, second fastest at the bottom. He's got the lead from Dominic Dvorak. Wow, a tenth, tenth of a second. Of a second. <laughs> now that's what he did in the first heat, isn't it? You know, the last few corners, he was really clean and suddenly the sled is, sled is carrying its speed up the hill to the line. Exactly, and I think like you said, he's just getting comfortable in races, uh, learning how to drive that sled in a race is different than training. And once he figures that out, he's gonna be just moving further and further up the list. Look at that, yes! Yeah. That was the hand slap with Dennis Fenker, yes! Because he was disappointed with the first run, this was much yeah. better. That was a great exit of Kreisel. Gets it down really nicely through the labyrinth. Didn't even hit the bunks through the labyrinth. We haven't seen many sleds do that. That's as good as the German drive down there. Yeah. So, Ivo de Bruyne with the lead, and that's a good run. Exactly three tenths quicker than his first. Wow. So he may move up too. Ivo de Bruyne, the leader, with five down, 15 to go. World Cup rookie Timo Rona, son of Olympic silver medalist Marcel Rona from Switzerland, makes his World Cup debut with a new brakeman, Adrian Fessler, behind him. And the start is a 5-0-4. 300 slower than their first start, also th uh, 300 slower than Eva De Bruin, who just went down. So he's already in the red by two hundredths of a second. Well, Timo Rona was one hundredth faster than Eva De Bruin. Long skid and a really oh. long skid. This is just killing the time going down there, but it's his first World Cup. Yep. And still very much in the foothills of bobsled driving, his third year on ice in total. Another nice exit of Kreisel. It got a little air, but not too bad. I think Rona only did three races last year, so really limited on track time. 3,200s back, only fourth fastest speed, so he's going to drop two or three spots behind Justin Olsen. No, just in front of him at the line. But the Dutch now get a turn in the leader's box. Well, Timo Rona, I'm sure we will hear a lot more from this young man. Exactly, to come out here in your first World Cup, yeah. beat some sleds, have some fun, it's a great experience. And in two weeks, he'll be on home ice in San Moritz as well, so. Here's the exit of S4, 
free. Oh, that was Kreisel, sorry. Here's S4 where he breaks into the skid and just loses control going down the whole thing. And like when you put skis sideways, it does slow the bobsled down, round runners or not. Exactly. Well, the apple didn't fall far from that tree. Anybody who knows what Marcel Rona looked like in periods, that's what Marcel Rona looked like in period. Next up, Nick Polignato of Canada, 13th off the first heat, tied with Cody Baskey of the USA, and one-tenth away from the tie for ninth. This is a massively tight midfield now. They had the fifth fastest start in the first heat. Let's see what they can do here. 491, 100 faster. That puts him in position to gain some time. That's a really quick getaway. 2700s up on Ivo de Brown of the Netherlands. And Ivo was one tenth behind them after the first heat. Once again, kind of brushing the walls here, but he's trying, fighting to get under control. Trying to do as little as possible in the Chrysler as well. Just keep the line he wants to get this exit right. Yes, nice line. Really nice exit. A little bumpy lower down in the labyrinth though. Still with the lead, it's down to two tenths. Losing time, but he might, the yeah. short track might help him out here. Quick enough, I think, in yep. the line, 1300s, 49.90. Now, the Dutch are out of the leader's box, but the group here is so tight, and they are 1300s behind Nick Polignato. The Dutch could move up another spot or two if some of the upcoming sleds make mistakes. Yeah, exactly, everything is so close. The second heat of a bobsled race, really anything could happen. Gets a kind of a small brush. You see his runner tips really working there to prevent that skid. And then over a nice exit of Kreisel. Still a little hang time on the second labyrinth, but that's everyone. Basically everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Decent run. And the race lead for Nick Polignata of Canada from Ivo de Bruyne of the Netherlands. All right, let's see what we've got. Let's move up some spots, says Nick Polignato. Well, clearly, the <laughs> Americans will try and stop them. Cody Bascu has been sitting in for the last uh, couple of races. Now with Hakeem Abdul Sabour. He is pushing on the front handles. And they were tied with the Canadians in the first heat in the start and downtime. Every, 498. Wow, 498, 300 quicker. Every hundredth now counts, Brittany. This is so close. It is. Now over a tenth back, so that's not going to help anything. But Cody's a great driver, so hopefully he could find some time in the track. Little skid out of S4, which is causing bigger skids down the bend away, but he'll get it under control. Kreisel's looking nice, controls the pressure as well. Really hangs it off the exit, but that sets him up nicely for that uh, doodle. Good looking run through the low labyrinth from Cody Baskew. Still in the red, the gap's opening wide now. 2700s back. This is only fourth fastest at the moment. Only six best speed, and at the line, he does drop some spots down to fourth place. So Polignato moves up to Brown, moves up. Dvorak moves up as Cody slips down the order. This track opened 50 years ago this week, the artificial track here and the footsteps of the natural track. So it's well known, but that means that tiny errors make a big difference. Exactly. And Cody's a North American driver, and North American drivers don't always get to come over here to Europe and develop on these tracks like everyone else. So although the Germans have been driving it for 50 years, Cody has it. So, yeah. <laughs> but it is well known, and he's learning it, and... Uh, growing as a driver as well. And don't, don't think even John Morgan's been coming here for 50 years. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think the only person who's been coming here for 50 years is probably Tuffy Latour. I would agree with that. <laughs> Next, uh, good luck in the hotel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Next up is Marcus Trichel of Austria with Marcus Gluck behind him. Now, Benny Meyer sitting in did not make the cut in the uh, second heat, so this is the only Austrian sled. But again, 700s out of a top nine result. 497 on the start, 100 faster than their first heat. So hopefully they could pull up and uh, 
close this gap a bit, but we're in the red by eight hundredths of a second already. Yeah. Well, behind Nick Polignato, they started 600 slower and they only had 300s in hand, so that momentum will take a while to regain. As he taps his way down the straight, a tenth behind into the Chrysler. Yeah, Polignato is really finding a way to pull ahead, but oh, here we go. Austria's got. Closing the gap a bit, nine hundredths of a second. Yeah, Marcus Trichel getting a little closer. What's the speed like? Down at the bottom, fourth fastest, down to seven hundredths of a second. This could be close, but he'll still be behind, won't he? Yes, he is by four hundredths. 49.97 to the 49.90 of Nick Polignato. So Marcus Trichel in second. We race at his home track next weekend. In fact, it's very much a family business because his mum and dad are involved in the management of the Innsbruck Eagles track. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be happy to be here. It, once again, it wasn't a bad run, but when you're fighting for hundreds of a second, it comes down to every little detail. You can see there he skids into that second labyrinth, but the bumps didn't hit the wall. Uh, I think the bend away is really what cost that tiebreaker or yeah. that close race. Just cutting a little too much ice. At, at natural speed, it looks clean, and then you see, no, he was slithering away there sideways through the corners. Next up, Brad Hall of Great Britain with Nick Gleason in a sled loaned by Billy Myhans of Switzerland. Sled and runners are the ones that Billy has been using for the last couple of years in this city of sled, so we know the combination is a good one, and it really helped Brad in the first heat. They had a very good start and managed to keep a lot of the speed on board in a sled that he's only got a couple of practice runs in. Yeah, four, uh, 489 start, 100th faster than their first heat, which was the fourth fastest overall. So their start is super competitive and putting them in the mix. Let's see if this new Swiss sled can help out the British drivers and brakemen. Two hundreds of a second behind Brad Hall, chasing Nick Polignato. Nice bend away, nice and clean. Yeah, super clean on that bend away, one of the best ones we've seen in the second heat. Don't forget, he's had four trips down the mountain in this sled, all of them in the snow. This is now his second run ever on clear ice, and he's in the lead, 300s, that's a good exit. 300s of a second, this is gonna be right to the 100th. Big skid in the final corner, it's a tie. A dead heat, Polignato moves up another one, but... Brad Hall does not lose a spot. And Brad Hall's run, 49.97, exactly the same time that Marcus Trichel has just posted. Wow. So, I thought he was going to pull ahead, and that finished curve just had a couple bumps. Yeah. And ended in a little skid high. into 18, just enough to sneak an 100th out of the sled, but he still has the lead. Through the first pressure, Kreisel looks really nice. Get a good view of the, that British flag on that Swiss sled yeah. on the back of the brakeman. Really low dip before that next pressure. And then on the exit. Well, Brad Hall and Nick Polignato are tied for the lead. Ten sleds down, ten to go here in Koenigsee, Bavaria. And lots more close racing to come. Tie for ninth place in the first of our two heats in Koenigsee, round four of the BMW IBSF two-man bobsleigh World Cup. 21-year-old Swiss rookie Mikkel Vogt in a sled and on the same runners with which Rico Peter finished in 14th place here last year, ninth in the first heat. Already in the red, little skid and hit out of S4, which causes a massive skid down the bend away. Brittany, you were surprised, as I was, to find out from this, our Swiss colleagues that Mikael Vogt only started driving in December 2017. Last year was his first year driving a bobsled. Second year is in the World Cup in the top ten. It, it blows my mind. Uh, he just has the it factor that it takes to be a driver, I guess. Just to come out here as a super young guy, no experience, and be competing on the world's toughest stage is very impressive. Well, 50.35, a bit of a pig's ear of a drive, and he He'll be disappointed that that one got away from him, but with the tiny amount of experience he's got, I think he's only driven on six bobsleigh tracks in total, then, you know, he is really, really punching above his experience weight, at least. Mikael Vogt, ninth place equal in the first heat. All right, that got away with him, but nevertheless, a good driver in the making. 
for sure. You can see here's a skid, uh, which happens to everyone at some point. Uh, skid down the bend away. But you know what? Overall, I have nothing bad to say about this kid. Little bumps here and there, but like we said, he's building experience, and 10 years from now, he could be winning this all of this. Yeah, yep. Swiss pop setting on its way back, it would seem. Big up to Switzerland was tied with Alexander Bredikin, another World Cup rookie. The Russian with Alexei Zaitsev behind him set the time for ninth place, which folks then tied. Our current leaders, Brad Hall and Nick Polignato. Now, Brad Hall was only three hundreds behind the Russian. So are we going to get a three-way tie for the lead here? 501 on the first heat, 502 on the second heat. So pretty consistent start times, but they're already behind uh, the two way leaders at 700 of a second. All right, so for the next few sleds, this is going to be in tiny increments of time. A tenth of a second back from Bredikin. Steers the bend away nicely, but a third tenth going into the Yenna curve. That leaves him late on the Chrysler. So Brittany, this exit is critical. It is. Gets away, but gets through there nicely. Well, he was kind of recovering his composure coming through the Chrysler, went from a tenth away to 800s back at the next clock. Gap's grown as it had to with those errors. And at the line, nearly two tenths back, 1900s, a 50.19 slide. The speed wasn't there at the bottom of the hill at Echo, and he wasn't going to find any more coming up the hill. Yeah, unfortunately, bobsled, it's kind of like a tumbleweed effect. When one thing goes wrong, it could just start slowing you down more and more and more as you get on the track, and that uh, dropped him down back into fifth place. Again, only his fourth ever two-man bobsleigh World Cup. Big second pressure. Now he knows he's got to focus on the exit. Yeah, exactly. Missed the second steer, drove it into a hole, uh, caught the exit though, and kept in all four runners coming out, just didn't have the speed. Well, it's no secret that the labyrinth in Koenigsegg provides about half the clips of disaster and damage in our opening reel, and for good reason, when you get it wrong, boy, does it go wrong. Exactly. Alexander Bredikin of Russia was ninth off the first heat. Teammate Maxim Anginov was in eighth place. Our joint leaders are Brad Hall and Nick Polignato. One Russian has slipped down the order. Can Anginov hang on for his fourth top 10 finish of the season? 501 start, ties the first tee and puts them in the lead. He's really trying to move up here, 800s ahead, coming through the S curves. He hasn't been out of the top half dozen all year. Two fifths and a six, but a skid onto the straight, and the back breaks away again. And now that skid is causing him to lose a little time, it looks like. But does he still have enough time in the bank to stay ahead of the Brits and the Canadians? Wavy Kreisel hits on the first short wall, bumps his way down through the labyrinth. 1500s up. He's got speed on board the Russian sleds. These Vimmer sleds are still fast. Yeah, looks like he's going to pull away with this. Yeah. Third fastest at the bottom of the track. He's got the lead by two tenths. The first sub 50 run in the, oh no, third sub 50 run. Uh, first in a while, 49.90, that's the, uh, nine four, that's the fastest run in the second heat. No, it's not. Nick Polignato's was 49.90. In fact, Ivo Debrun 49.93 was a fraction quicker as well, but both runs count. Anginov has the lead. Yeah, you can see him coming out of S4 right there. Little skid, touches the wall, but it didn't seem to affect his speed. Maintained his position. Cladded the wall out into the lower labyrinth. Yeah, and coming through here, does he get by? Without, yeah, he gets by without the bunk hit. Yeah, all six foot three of Ilya Malik stays planted to the floor as much as you can down there. So, Maxim Andrinov leads. Seventh place in the first heat for Maciej Lutia Poland with Krzysztof Talkowski was a really great first trip. Now, let's see, like the French, like the Dutch last weekend, whether he can put together another storming run and guarantee one of Poland's best bobsleigh results in a long while. And he's in position to move up into the top six, which would be huge for their country. Yeah, only 200s out of a sixth place finish, 498, good start. Yeah, consistent with their first start, so they've taken care of business so far. 1100s in the lead. 
and they were only three hundreds behind uh, France, who's next off the block. Yeah, so really tight battle below the top three. And Luti is in it three times. That's the standard issue down the bend away. Coming through the Kreisel, Let's see how he manages this exit. Gap's going to come down. The Russians had 112, but he's right with them. Big bump at the bottom there of the Labyrinth. What's he got at the bottom? Still in the lead. 119, 121. No, not a... It's going to be close, but he should have the lead over the Russians. And at the line by 900, 49.92. He added to his advantage by a couple of hundreds over Maxim Anginov. And look, he's getting concussed <laughs> by his brakeman. This is awesome. I just love people, seeing people excited. <laughs> well, listen, you know, we say this so often, they're in this for the love because there ain't no money. Just the opposite. This is a hole into which money goes and doesn't come back out. Look at what it means. Exactly. It was a solid run. They're guaranteed seventh place. And I, with this run, that's normal where the brakeman flies up there. But with this run, they might move up to the top yep. six, get on the podium. We might get to see the big grins in the leader's box. And it might be possibly at the expense of Roman Heimrich and Dorian Oteville, who finished in fifth position last weekend. Fifth place in Altenburg. Sixth place after the first heat here in Koenigsee. Oh boy, is he having a good seven days. Exactly, and he wants a top six place as well. Well, this is a battle of the minnows, Poland versus France. You know, both have got long histories in bobsled France with lots of pre previous success, but with these two young drivers, they're now hitting the form that they've been building for the last couple of years. 4.95, that's a good getaway. Yeah, one of the better starts so far. Keeps him in the green. 700s in the lead. We'll see how he manages the S4 here and coming into the bend away. Gets out clean. S typical hits that we see from everyone. Everybody in France holding their breath right now. 1.11.8, that's about the same speed that we saw from the Poles matches, Luti. Nice and exit. Creeping away a fraction. He's looking for his second career top six finish. His second in eight days. Roman Heinrichs cleared just about every hurdle there is. Nice exit off 17. Clean on to 18. He leads. Top six guaranteed. Matches Lucy, Christoph Tarkowski, thumbs up. You know, they've come up the order with these guys. And again, like the Poles, look what it means yeah. to these drivers and brakemen. This is awesome. Just seeing these guys in the top 10 is huge. They're super excited. Cheering with the crowd. Viva la France. Yeah, absolutely. And listen, he was only 300s out of fifth after the first heat. Look at this, good exit, nice, clean run onto the straight. Just about avoids the wall on the uh, exit of the S's. Yeah, that exit of S4 is probably the trickiest exit on the track. Kreisel caused his problems, looks crazy, but to really get S4 clean is tricky. They're fuller of adrenaline now than they were at the start. Roman Heinrich matches Luti, Maxim Andronov. There's a great top three ahead of Brad Hall and Nick Polignato. Five to go. Final five sleds, race four, the BMW IBSF, two-man bobsleigh, World Cup, Koenigsee, Bavaria, Martin Haven, and alongside me, Brittany Reinbolt, the US driver. Oscars keeper Manis, not out of the medals so far this season. Only fifth in heat one, but it's a tight race. Very tight. 4.92 on the start, exactly what they pushed on the first heat. They're known for their starts. Their whole nation is known for sliding. Most successful sliding nation in the world, per capita, I believe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 12 months ago, if he'd been 300 ahead of Roman Heinrich, he'd have been struggling at the bottom of the top 20. Now he's struggling to hang on to a top five from the Frenchman. 400s was the gap coming onto the Chrysler. He's a kilometer last slower than the French, or half a kilometer down. Ooh, he's dropping to the red by 400s. Oscar's keeper man is, is behind. Roman Heinrich is going to be the leader at the end of this. Is yes, the speed's not there. The oh. French were quicker. The gap's out to a tenth. He might drop two places. He's no, he down. doesn't. Heinrich is going to be no worse than fifth. Wow. Roman Heinrich needs one more spot, and then he, like Katy Bail of Austria, will be in the European Championship medals. Wow. This is huge. Wow, it is huge. It's not a bad day either for the last.
champions. I know, but look at the body language, the deflation compared to the elation of the Poles and the French. Yeah, yeah. When you're used to winning and you get fourth or fifth, it's a bad day. Yeah. Well, the French and the Poles are now going to start recalibrating their targets the way that Kiba Manis has done for the last couple of seasons. A podium is the bare minimum that he considers acceptable. Exactly. Well, he goes to offer his congratulations to Roman Heinrich there and Dorian Otteville on the left. Allez les Bleus, the French lead with four to go. Four to go, European Championships, three Germans in the top four. This is Nico Valto with Paul Krentz behind him. 494 on the start, 100th off of their first one, so that's consistent. 700s in the lead. Now, he led a tight group outside of the medal positions, but from him to the medals, 700s, it's still achievable. This is a good straightaway for Nico Valter. Wow, but he's dropped behind. He only had 700s over Roman Heinrich. He's now dropped behind. He was 200s ahead out of the S's. Wow. What about the speed? Where are we? He needs 121 from the FES sled. Nico Valter's in the red. 119.8, this is going to be very close. No, it's not. 1100's back. He's going to beat Jahind. Oh, my word. The French are in the European Championship medals. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. What a day for the French. The French, no worse than fourth. Wow, no worse than fourth They guaranteed a European Championship medal. Well, I don't know what Roman Heinrich got for Christmas, but he's given himself and his team two late Christmas presents in the last eight days. Fifth last week, fourth this week. Nico favoring his right thigh. I wonder if he pulled a muscle at the yeah, start. Looks like his, that, maybe his hamstring? He does, yes, he does not look happy. They had a decent start, considering he could possibly be injured. Yeah. A 494 getaway, but Nico Valter, you know, if you've got that pain, the waves of pain, your brain tries to override them and concentrate, but it doesn't take much to take the focus. Was it when he got in? Did he just pull something then? And potentially. It's hard to tell from the video replay. He yeah. covered it well. He's a fighter. He got in the sled, kept going. Three to go. Hansi Lochner, the Bavarian who won here in December 2016-17. Let's see if he can do it again. The man for Berchtesgarten. 1600s covered the top three. 487. Big start from him and Christian Rusp. And like you said, this is his home track, so he wants to move up. He wants to take care of business here. Can he do it? Now, he's also getting used to a new two-man sled. He's driving an FES Berlin-built sled, not the Valners he's been used to in two-man. So, still finding his feet with his sled, but this is where he learned to drive. Yeah, so far he's in the green, looking good, 1600s ahead. It's gone from 2500s down to 1600s. Oh, so he's he's lost a tenth to the French. Has he got enough in hand? He must have enough in hand. Oh, 1100s. 1100s is coming down, but there's not enough ice. He will be in the medals. He is by 900s of a second. Wow. 49.77. Well, Dorian Oteville on the left, Roman Heinrich on the right. Applaud Lochner and Rasp. They will be guaranteed at least a bronze medal here but the French have a European Championship bronze at the very least. Two wow. to go. Have the French ever got a medal in a, a in World Cup race? In a two-man, not this century. We'd have to ask Bruno Michon, who's coaching the Monaco team. Wow. We're witnessing history. Took a hit there. Typical home track, knows how to control it. Yeah. Even losing time. Yeah, but, you know, that knocked a few more hundreds out of the lead. Now then, two to go, and they are both our reigning Olympic champions. Francesco Friedrich trailed Justin Cripps by 400s last week and overturned that to win. He trails Justin Cripps by 300s here, 485. Fastest start in the competition. You know they want it when they come out and push the top start. He never doesn't want it. He almost never gets out started and rarely gets out driven. 1900s up. It's not about Lochner. 
cleanest bend away I have seen so far. Great speed, 112.6, only a couple of sleds have gone quicker. Nice exit of Kreisel. Look at this, driving away. This is really laying down a marker for Justin Cripps. Come and get it, big boy. Woo, textbook lines here. He's putting on a clinic for everybody. Oh, flop off the final corner. Finally, there was an error, but 49.47, three tenths faster than Lochner on that one run alone. Wow. Wow is right. That was pretty incredible, and now Cripps has some serious work ahead of him. Friedrich has depths of talent that he can keep going to, no matter how much he produces in the first heat, the well is never dry. Exactly, it's crazy. Really nice Kreisel here. Catches the third wave, brings it around, threads that needle perfectly. Now he won the first three races this season in the two-man with three different brakemen. I think this is a fourth different brakeman. Wow. So Francesco Friedrich, the leader from Hansi Lochner and Roman Heinrich. The final sled on the ice is Canada's Justin Cripps. This is for his first win of the season. Cripps, the silver medalist. Last weekend, after leading the first heat, 489. Another good start, but it leaves him a couple of hundreds behind. Exactly, 300s back right now. He's going to have to do some serious driving to pull ahead of the Germans. But just, he can do it. Just 300s in it. He needs a perfect bend away. He gets a really good run. Watch him hold the pressure. Nice constant line. Let's look at the exit. Nice exit. But losing time. Eight hundredths of a second back. This is still for silver medal, but this is an epic run for Justin Cripps. He's only nine hundredths behind a storming Francesco Friedrich, but it's gold for the fourth race in a row for Friedrich. 49.61 is the second fastest run of the heat for Justin Cripps. And for the second week in a row, the first heat leader finishes with a silver medal. Overall, once again, not a bad run. 23rd World Cup win for Francesco Friedrich in two and four man. Justin Cripps, two races this season in two man, two silver medals. Decent exit of S4, gets it down the bend away, but unfortunately, I think he had one extra tap than Francesco Friedrich, which cost him a bit. Well, Justin Cripps still a big smile on his face. Hansi Lochner there, the bronze medalist. He looks pretty happy with himself. But I think perhaps the happiest men down there on the finish top, Francesco Friedrich and Martin Grotkop. And also Roman Heinrich and Dorian Oteville. But the win goes for the fourth race this season to Francesco Friedrich, who is now on something of a roll. So Friedrich with a fantastic second heat performance. And Brittany Reinbolt, you know, there was a tiny couple of errors in the first heat. He, he, in fact, he only tidied up one of them, but he tidied up the top of the track to finish amazingly. And they just left Fra uh, Hannes Lochner trailing in their wake. Yeah, exactly. Friedrich was in, the, he had an okay first run, put him in the mix, and then just unleashed the fury on the second heat and put down an awesome second run which solidified him the lead. So there is confirmation of the result. The European champion is Francesco Friedrich from Johannes Lochner and Roman Heinrich. Fourth for Nico Walter, fifth for Oscar Skibermanis, and sixth in the European Championships, Matthias Luti of Poland. What a day for some of our small nations. <sighs> Breathless stuff again. The women's race was high drama. The men's race, high drama. And again, Friedrich goes to the special draw and comes out with another top drive. He does, he does.
And I'm, I think I'm most impressed with the French today. The Germans, we expect them to do well on this track. Yep. Cripps, he's been driving awesome. But the French to come away, get a medal at European Championships, is just awesome. Yeah, absolutely fantastic result for Roman Heinrich. And now, you know, instead of dreaming about a top six run and hoping to get a good pair of runs and get the top ten, suddenly they're starting to fantasize at night about a podium, an overall podium. But it's like like uh, Katy Baal for Austria, to take a European Championship bronze medal is something that's going to put them in the record books. And, you know, that's a big feather in his cap. Only started driving three and a half years ago, Roman Heinrich. And so, yes, of, of the top six performances, he and Matthias Luti are, are the big, big winners here. Of course, Francesco Friuti, Justin Cripps, Hansi Lochner with the medals, with the big points hauls, and that helps their World Cup campaigns. Well, lots of drama here in the women's and the two-man race today. Very little in terms of snow, just a few flakes fluttering down. Tomorrow is supposed to be a clear day as well for the four-man contest. So we look forward to that. And Brittany Reinbelt, what about next weekend? Heading to Innsbruck, again, a real quiet driver's track. Yeah, next week, it's all about the start. You want to throw down a smoker on the start and just hold on to it the whole way down the track. It's short, it's smooth, and it's going to favor the starters next year. Week. All right. All right, well, the hurry-up offense continues through January. Four races in four weekends. Altenburg here in Königsee, and then Innsbruck and Samaritz. For the third time in... Uh, fourth time in five years, Francesco Frujic is our two-man European champion ahead of, Fran uh, ahead of Johannes Lochner and Francis Roman Heinrich. Nico Walter, Oskars Kibermanis and Poland's Matthias Luti ahead of Maxim Anjanov of Brad Hall in eighth place. Marcus Tychel and Ivo de Brown rounding out the top ten in the European Championships. So, of course, we take the North American and other non-European athletes out. Uh, predominantly the Americans and the Canadians here, but never, never mind who turns up. Francesco Friedrich somehow again managed to rock it in a class of, of his own. And again, you know, if you want video to watch to teach you how to drive this track, Brittany Reinbold, it's really hard to look anywhere other than Friedrich right now. Exactly. I think I'm going to go back and watch our broadcast, download his run, and watch it myself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's eight runs from eight races, and it's hard to better them. Francesco Frujic, four for four this season. So the World Cup sees him with a perfect winning record. Oscar's keeper man is still in second. Ahead of Nico Valtra, Maxim Anjanov, Dominic Dvorak. Look at that, some of the smaller nations, the younger drivers. Dvorak and Trikel, fifth and sixth in the World Cup standings. All right, the big guns, Justin Cripps now jumps up to 13th, right behind Cody Bascu. But Roman Heinrich as well, didn't race before Christmas. He's up in the top 15 in the world. So the Secretary General of the IBSF, the Bob Sane Skeleton Federation, Heike Grossvang, presents the flowers to our third placed crew, Hansi Lochner and Christian Rusp in the silver medal position. Cam Stones and fellow 27-year-old <laughs> Justin Cripps and our race winners, Martin Gropkop. He has won already this season with Francesco Frejic, so he takes his second win. Frejic takes his fourth unbeaten so far in two-man and close to unbeatable in the four-man as well will he claim his seventh gold in the season tomorrow and another european championship title there's only one way to find out you're gonna have to join us sleds are on ice we start the action at 1 30 local 12 30 gmt my thanks to Brittany reinbolt for words of wisdom today. Thank you to you for joining us. On behalf of the IBSF TV crew, I'm Martin Haven saying thank you for being with us. We'll see you tomorrow, 1.30, 12.30 GMT, live trackside in Koenigsee, Bavaria. Auf Wiedersehen and goodbye.
Yes! 